What's up everybody? My name's Arcagus, and today I am bringing you a video about the Blackmagic Speed Editor and a particular issue I've had with this keyboard for the last few months. If you have this keyboard and are using Windows and you are one of the many people who found their device suddenly became unresponsive to DaVinci Resolve, then this video might be able to help you. So before we talk about the problem, let's first talk about what the keyboard itself is and how it's supposed to work. So this device is designed specifically for working with the DaVinci Resolve software. You open the or launch DaVinci Resolve, it will find this keyboard, activate it, and then allow you to use it as part of your editing workflow. And you know it's active and ready to go by this light on the snap button. That's your first indication in its default config that it is now awake and talking to DaVinci Resolve. Now you'll notice that I have DaVinci Resolve open right now, but my keyboard is its not on. It's not sending any output to the software and the software is not activating it. You can close and open DaVinci Resolve several times. It won't do anything. You can disconnect and reconnect the keyboard. Still not communicating with the software. Now, there is a normal use case where this keyboard can turn itself off if it's been asleep for an extended period of time between your editing sessions. This is by design. It's meant to protect the long-term life of the device by putting it to sleep if it's been dormant too long. The solution for that is to simply hold down the cut and the smooth cut buttons for four or five seconds. You'll hear the USB disconnect sound. Let it go, you'll hear it reconnect to the system. Additionally, you have this DaVinci Controls Panel setup software. It doesn't actually talk to the keyboard. What it actually does is look up the Windows hardware registry and find DaVinci products and read out the information found there for the product. All that information is coming from Windows. It's not actually doing any sort of interfacing with the keyboard. It's not sending any data to the keyboard. It's not receiving any data from the keyboard. All the information is coming out of Windows. But that's a good thing. So we know if we disconnect this cable and reconnect the cable, we will hear it disconnect from USB and reconnect USB. If we hold down these two buttons, we'll hear it disconnect. We'll see it disconnect in the software. If you let go, it reconnects. So we know with a 99% confidence level that this hardware is working. So that means that the problem we're having is software. Something is preventing this from communicating with the DaVinci Resolve application. Either DaVinci Resolve is unable to see this keyboard to send the activation code, or something in software is intercepting DaVinci's call to the keyboard and is preventing proper communication, reconciling. So what is that problem? Well, according to the internet, this keyboard in the past has had notoriously problematic issues with RGB lighting applications. So Asus Aura, Razer Chroma, Logitech LightSync, all the, all the major vendors have their own version of RGB software. And most users will have any number of applications running simultaneously on their system. In the past, users have had to stop, terminate, or uninstall these applications to get this keyboard to work for them. And that would indeed suck if we still had to do that today. But that shouldn't be the case. RGB Lighting Software has come a long way over the last year, and DaVinci Resolve has come a long way with its software over the, over the last year. And that should not still be an issue anymore. And in fact, I had this keyboard for several months last year before this issue started for me. And I had multiple versions of that, that software running as well. So it was never an issue of RGB lighting software for me. And nothing changed with my RGB lighting software around the time that this issue began. So what caused the issue? Well, it took a lot of troubleshooting. And what I narrowed it down to was the Logitech Lamp Array service. 
Now, as best I can tell, this is a Logitech file. Logitech did develop this, but it's not installed by Logitech G Hub or Logitech uh, software. It might be installed by a driver, but there were no Logitech drivers that I installed or updated around the time that this problem occurred. For me, that means that this is a Windows application or at least a Windows installed file for one of its features. And that takes us back to September of 2023 when Microsoft introduced the dynamic lighting feature for Windows 11. I adopted that update around December and I started encountering the issue with my keyboard the next time I had an editing task which happened around late January. So at least for me, it appears that this is the source of my problem. And in fact, let's see what happens when I stop that service. So this is what this, these are the steps you would take to try this out for yourself. Open your task manager, go to services, and search for Logitech or for Lamp Array. Oops. And just stop that service. Okay, the service has now stopped for me. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's reset our keyboard now. Notice the speed editors come back and my snap light is now on. If I attempt to control it, you'll see that DaVinci Resolve is now responding to the keyboard. So what's the long-term impact of disabling the service on your system? Short answer, I don't really know. I still don't know for sure where this service came from. If it came from a Logitech driver or if it came from Microsoft, I'm still willing to bet it's Microsoft since they talk about the HID Lamp Array service specifically in their white paper for dynamic lighting. But I don't know that for sure. I just found this in the last couple of days. I've had it just stopped for, for a couple of days without any notable uh, change to my system. My mouse, my Logitech mouse still looks the same as it did before. Uh, I can't see any notable change in my system's behavior with that service turned off. That being said, I cannot claim that it won't have have some impact on you in your configuration. So be advised that there could still be some risk. However, if you wanted to disable it permanently like I have, then what you would do is run services.msc find the Logitech Lamp Array service bring up its properties and change its startup type from automatic to disabled and click apply. This should permanently disable the service on your system. It won't restart the next time you start your system and it won't allow you to activate the service even now in task manager. It stopped now, even if you wanted to start it. It will not start. It is permanently disabled in your system. And you now have a working speed editor again. So I hope you found some benefit in this, especially if you're one of the owners of this product with Windows. Uh, if you like this, give me a like. If you don't like it, dislike it. I don't you know. I, I enjoy the feedback. But that's really all I have for this video. If you want to check out more of my videos, check out my channel. But that's it for this video. Thank you. Be safe.